Today, a dire warning for mortgage holders. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, National Australia Bank has just warned mortgage holders that their loan repayments could climb by a third or an average of $721 a month during the next 18 months. A surge of home loan pain would also see Australian borrowers experiencing the tightest budget pressures in a decade, they say. NAB's forecast mortgage rates to increase by 2.25 percentage points by September 2023, which would see an average Australian household with a $600,000 home loan owe their bank another $700 a month. Tapas Strickland, NAB's Director of Economics, said interest payments as a share of household income will rise to the highest level since September 2012, with interest payments across all borrowers predicted to increase from the current 4.4% of household income to 7.9%. This would see mortgage repayments as a proportion of take-home pay climb above the post-global financial crisis average of 7% and well above the pre-pandemic level of 5.7%. While it's clear the household sector will be able to service a higher mortgage rate, a rise in interest payments relative to income of 3.5 percentage points will have to be financed by a reduction in savings and or lower consumption than otherwise, unless the economy remains very strong and wages growth accelerates considerably, Strickland said. CoreLogic data show that Australia's median property price was at $718,146 in January, following a 22.4% annual increase, which was the fastest pace in 32 years. Home prices in capital cities and regional areas are also growing at 10 times the level of wages. Factoring in the 20% deposit, a borrower paying off a typical Australian home would need to pay the bank $547,517. An owner-occupier with this kind of mortgage, with a still low 2.39% variable rate, would have monthly repayments of $2,238. Should variable rates rise to 4.64% as predicted, monthly repayments on a mid-priced Australian home would grow by $721 a month to $2,959. That's a 32% increase in just 18 months. Wages in 2021, however, only saw a 2.3% increase, despite the ban on skilled migrants from moving to Australia until December, with pay level growth stuck between the long-term average of 3% since mid-2013. Wages in the private sector grew by 2.4% compared with 2.1% for public sector employees, according to the latest data from the ABS. Sarah Hunter KPMG senior economist said the latest wages growth data was still below the RBA's preferred level before it raised rates. And wages are also well below the 3.5% inflation rate. At the moment, the average worker is experiencing declining real wages, Hunter said. Although markets expect tightening to begin immediately, momentum in wage setting and price inflation means we expect the RBA to wait until the second half of the year, August or possibly later, for the fourth quarter, before pulling the trigger. The Reserve Bank of Australia cut the cash rate to a record low of 0.1% in November 2020, following the national COVID lockdowns, and RBA Governor Philip Lowe last year repeatedly said it would stay there until 2024 at the earliest. But NAB is predicting rates will hit 0.5% by the end of 2022, and 0.75% by the March quarter of 2023. Even with rates at low levels, an average full-time earner on $90,329 salary with a $524,517 loan already has a debt-to-income ratio of 6.4. That is already considered to be at a dangerous level by the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, where a borrower would struggle to pay their mortgage and bills. Since November, APRA has required the banks to model a borrower's ability to cope with a 3 percentage point increase in mortgage rates, up from 2.5 percentage points previously. And if you think that that rate rise is unlikely to happen, 
then note this, Westpac has been the latest big four bank to slash its lowest variable rate, heating up competition in variable home loan rates. The move follows NAB trimming its basic variable rate on March the 9th and ANZ on February the 8th. Westpac's lowest variable rate is now an ultra-competitive 2.09% for people with a 30% deposit, while both St George and the Bank of Melbourne now offer 2.04% for borrowers with a 40% deposit. There is also a $3,000 cashback on offer for Westpac refinances and $4,000 for the subsidiaries. Westpac Group's fixed rates, though, continue to increase, with its one to five year rates for owner occupiers and investors now up by 0.3%. This brings Westpac's four year fixed rate for owner occupiers paying principal and interest to 3.99%. That's a 2.1 percentage point increase to the 1.89% rate in April last year. RateCity.com.au data show that Westpac home loan rate changes for owner occupiers are pretty significant. It's astonishing to see some fixed rates rise by over two percentage points in the last 12 months when the cash rate hasn't moved a muscle, said Sally Tyndall, who's RateCity.com.au's research director. Westpac and other banks are responding to rising costs of funding and the expected RBA hikes. As a result, the majority of big four bank owner occupier fixed rates now start with a three something or even a four something. It's no wonder the proportion of customers choosing to fix are plummeting. RateCity.com.au said variable rates will continue on a different trajectory, at least for now. For now, there is an opportunity for variable rate customers to be moving to a lower rate. And people need to be acutely aware the RBA is poised to hike this year, Tyndall said. A year ago, the battleground for the banks was still squarely set on fixed rates. However, record levels of mortgage holders are now locked into a fixed rate, and so banks have shifted their focus to variable rate customers looking to switch. Interestingly, Westpac has not yet changed their core views about the RBA tightening cycle that, and that continue to hold that it will begin in August, with the cash rate peaking at 1.75%. Even though we're still on board with the RBA governor's intentions to run policy according to the Australian conditions, rather than following the FOMC policy, the more determined actions of the FMOC are likely to slightly accelerate the RBA's tightening profile, they said today. Our current forecast is for the RBA to raise the cash rate by 15 basis points in August, to be followed by 25 basis points in October, and a further 25 basis points in February, May, August, and December in 2023, with the final 25 basis points in February 2024. And they say we now expect the RBA to bring forward the third hike from February 2023 to December 2022 and follow the same pattern throughout 2023, with the cycle ending in November 2023 rather than February 2024. This would mean the RBA would end 2022 having restored the 65 basis points of emergency cuts, which it implemented during COVID. Relative to market expectations, Westpac's forecasts for the cycles of both FOMC and the RBA are significantly more modest, relying on two things. One, more progress in settling inflation and tempering demand than is expected from the market and the complementary tightening of financial conditions that will be delivered by both central banks as they shrink their balance sheets. The FOMC through its quantitative tightening policies and the RBA with the repayment of the $180 billion term funding facility in September 2023 and June 2024. With the RBA expected to be narrowing the wide interest rate differential with the FOMC during 2023 and prospects of cuts in the federal fund rate in 2024, a more settled risk environment in 2023 still supports their forecast for the Aussie dollar to reach 80 cents in 2023. But of course, lowering the variable rates now is a bear trap for the unwary because we know that interest rates are going to rise. And whilst you might be hooked into a variable rate at the moment at a good rate, you need to be thinking about what happens when rates rise by perhaps 2%. Because as we said at the start of this conversation, the chances are that the costs of that mortgage are going to rise substantially. 
And it's also worth bearing in mind that many people with fixed rate loans on low rates will find that those are beginning to mature over the next year or so. And when they have to refinance from that point, if they go fixed rate again, they'll have to pay a lot more. And if they go variable, they'll have to pay a lot more. So this is a time for mortgage holders and prospective mortgage holders to be very cautious and do their calculations and include buffers in your calculations. You have to expect rates will rise. You have to expect that mortgage repayments will rise faster. And the reason for that is that when rates are so low, the relative proportion that you now pay on interest repayments considerably grows relative to the principal. And that is why a 30% lift in the average mortgage repayment over the next year or so is absolutely on the cards. And it's one that you should be budgeting for now. This is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer.